might take a while. <laughs> This is how you come down. Again, background sounds is my heater. I just fired it up. And adventure dog chewing on an elk bone. <laughs> As usual. Now, before I forget, I forgot yesterday. I forgot to include the photos the kind lady shared with us in her email when she caught that thing outside her window. So I uh, will share those right away. Not right now because I'm not live, so. Um, here are the missing photos from yesterday's, one of yesterday's emails. What else? I'm going to share this bear with you. <laughs> Look at the size of this bear. My time's running out. There's this bear, but there's another one. And they are substantial large bears. But this great big monster right here, <clears throat> I just don't think it's an old senior citizen bear. And the other one I'm after, I believe, is larger. Actually, it is larger. And I think it's the one. I think it is the one that I singled out this last spring. And I'm, and I'm uh, looking to possibly harvest. I was only 37 yards away from this bear last night. And the trail camera seems to make it a little brighter than it actually was. But anyway, there you go. <laughs> that is a big bear. Now... I've got a lot of cleanup to do, to do today yet from the chicken, our uh, chicken processing before it starts turning sour outside with all the leftovers and attracting every bear and predator for miles. We had to take off to another city yesterday, so that prevented getting that done. I'm losing, I'm, I'm losing what, even what days it is. Apparently it's Sunday. So tomorrow I have to get my new winter tires on my truck and then I start packing and I'm going two days north again. That's what I'm doing. And that'll be my last trip. Listen to this. Steve, first, I want to thank you for your wealth of knowledge. I'm a self-taught hunter who started hunting at 24 years old and now 35. All right, self-taught is, is good. Quickly, I found your YouTube content in the pre-How to Hunt days and motivated me to become the best hunter I could be. At 35 years old, I'm happy to say I've harvested big bucks, moose, elk, mountain goat, bears, and wolves. Thank you for the motivation. It changed my life forever. Most of me hunting is solo like yourself. Right on, man. That's freaking awesome. Send me some pictures when you get a chance. Now... I've been sitting on this for over a year, but I think I'll share my story. Last September, I squeezed in two weeks to hunt solo for moose before moving to Alberta, as I won an LEH entry in a unit I've been successful at before. The first four days I spent camped on my, my land in Fort St. James on Stewart Lake. Here we go, right in the zone. After not seeing much sign, I packed up and brought camp a hundred kilometers into the bush. Long story short. I tried my best, but with extremely hot weather and only being able to hunt before the rut, I was not able to connect with a bull. 
now on my last night after being camped at No Name Lake, solo for 10 days. I crawl into my tent and shut my eyes. 15 minutes later, I awake to what sounds like two creatures absolutely losing their shit, screaming at the most insane pitch I've ever heard. This was about 50 yards behind me, if not closer. That would really suck. Within 30 seconds, on the opposite side of my tent, I heard another creature making the loudest, deepest whooping sounds. Kind of like this. Whoop! 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 And all went silent. For some reason, not one ounce of fear went through me, even being completely alone. I convinced myself I heard an owl capturing a rabbit and went to sleep. <laughs> no shit. Wow. That's not common, but we have heard of people having that reaction. In the morning, I thought about what I had heard and kind of my senses. This is no owl. The hair stood up on my body and I packed my stuff up and I left a day early due to this terrifying experience. I don't want to stick around for another evening. Now I have to add, while I was waiting for Moose to come out two nights in a row before this, I had seen a low-lying orb in the sky. There's no plane. This was definitely a UFO. Locals also reported seeing things in the sky during those days. Also spoke with the local natives. And it's just a another it's just a matter of fact. Bigfoot walks the remote bush of the Amanika. Okay, the Amanika is up north British Columbia area, for all who aren't familiar. I can't for sure say what I heard was Bigfoot, but I have no other explanation. Thanks for all your motivation. I thought I'd, I thought I'd share my odd encounter. Please don't share my last name. Okay, man, I gotcha. Gotcha. There you go. You know what you heard. I know what you heard. And if it's a no-name lake, if you want, if you do email me your photos of your game animals, which I love to see. I always love to see people's true hunting success, meaning they did it all. They didn't pay somebody to go scout and take them to it and hold their hand. I love, love, love seeing solo hunters success, especially in my home province. Moving to Alberta, so now you're moving to probably what I would consider one of the best places in the world to be as an outdoors person. Let me know where you're moving to, too as well all right but if you want if you do share your photos with me share with me the no name lake all right obviously i don't need your hunting spot <laughs> i don't need anybody's hunting spot but uh i'm curious to where all right man i'm heading back up north myself not too far from there in a couple days Thanks for sending that in. I'm glad you sent it in. And if, I'm sure now you're speaking openly about it. You spoke openly about it in that area. And you said on your land. So you own land up there? But anyway, um, I'm guessing you spoke with some of the, the locals up there. And if you did, and if you got any stories or experiences shared with you from them, send that too. If you want to. All right, man? More strange things around the ranch. Hi Steve, it's Deborah again. You read my story on the creature by the chicken tractor. All right, this is the, this is where I, I missed the photos from yesterday. I noticed you forgot to show the picture. I was hoping to get some opinions of what you and your viewers thought this thing could be. The chicken tractor with the two little hens is two feet tall. I'm a little over five feet, and my son said it looked similar to my size when we tried to reenact the scene. LOL. This is going to be a very long email, but I want to send you more things that happened. And if I remember more, I'll send those later. So, my first story that I wanted to tell you about that <clears throat> happened to me and my youngest son. We had purchased the land that we planned to build our new home on, and while the concrete etc. was being framed and poured, my son and I would drive up to the property every day, an hour away, to feed and water the chickens, since we had already built the new coop while the ground was being prepped for the concrete pour. Well, we had too many roosters, since I had bought a straight of run of chicks, and now we had to figure out what to do with all this extra fully grown roosters. 
probably a dozen more roosters than we needed. So my son and I were inside the chicken run and we were deciding which ones to keep and which ones to either sell or harvest. Son was mid-sentence when something from the forest yelled out with a very strong and loud voice, Get it! Get it! Very shocked, we both stopped and looked at each other. I said, Oh my God, did you just hear that? And to my son, and he said, Of course I heard that. I said, What did you hear? He said, I just heard something out in the forest yell, Get it! Get it! Spelt G-I-T-I-T. -I, -T. <clears throat> I said, Yes, that's what I heard too. It sounded like a human-like voice mimicking a bird, but much louder and less authentic for lack of a better word. Like it didn't sound like a real bird. It was like somebody screaming and pretending to be a bird. So hard to describe it, Steve. He described it accurately. Many people have described the same thing. A lame-ass attempt at mimicking other sounds. Well, we didn't know what to make of it, so we drove back home to the city. The next day, my son greeted the drive up without me and fed a, and feed by myself. He arrives at the ranch and calls me on the phone. He says, hey, mom, you know those roosters we said we didn't want? I said, yeah. Why? He said, they're all dead. Something came in the chicken run and broke all their necks. None were eaten, but they are dead. The ones we wanted to keep are fine and still alive. He was pretty freaked out about it. So was I. And so am I. What the hell? Another time, I've had a telepathic or mind speak message one day while walking the thousand steps down a dirt road to get to the back of our property to where the chicken coop is. I was walking along and suddenly got a message in my head that said, look up in the trees. And my first reaction was, what trees? Because I didn't know what the message meant. Never had anything like that before, and I've never had anything like that since. The next day, a neighbor reported seeing a mountain lion on our road. Another time, my oldest son was driving me around on our side by side. He likes to scare me to be funny when he's driving, so he speeds up and starts swerving side to side on the dirt road to get a reaction out of me. And as soon as he started, that I looked at him and I saw past his head there was about a seven to eight foot black Bigfoot slash Sabe creature walking from left to right behind a large dirt pile. Sun was just flying along and going about his silliness and I didn't see it. I asked my ex-hubby how tall he thought that dirt pile was and he said it was about five to six feet tall. Well I could clearly see the shoulders and the head above the dirt pile and it had to be at least seven to eight feet tall. It never looked at us, it just kept walking from left to right behind the dirt pile. Another time I was on the side by side having just finished finished up my feeding my chickens, I was about to drive away. I looked over and saw a being of some kind. It was sitting next to a large oak tree. It was what some people call the mandrill or baboon type Bigfoot. It was sitting on his butt, but it had its arms out straight like a cat does when they sit down and have their arms straight out in front of them. It was exactly 50 feet from me because the garden is 50 feet by 50 feet and was right on the other side of the garden. It's just staring at me. It had the baboonish looking face. It had dark brown down the nose and lighter colors of beige or tan on his cheeks. I freaked out, froze with fear, and I didn't want to look at it again or show any fear. I was all by myself and felt very vulnerable. So I took my first finger and thumb and started making a pinhole size view to look at it through. I was so scared, I don't know what I I don't know why I did that. I guess I felt like an intimidated child mostly. It was staring at me and I remembered people saying do not look at them directly. So that is all I could think of. It felt like it was looking into my soul. I sat there for three or four minutes that felt like a lifetime. I finally got the courage to crank up the side by side and drive away. I totally expected it to follow me home, but it didn't. I turned around and it was no longer there. I felt relief like you cannot imagine. It was a truly 
It was a truly life flash before my eyes experience. I don't think it was very big because it was only three and a half feet tall sitting down, but my perception may be off on that because I didn't want to stare at it and would be really hard to judge. When something that scary is looking at you and you are frozen in fear and feel like you can't move, all you can think of is getting the heck out of there. I had another experience last April while I was planting tomatoes in my garden that is close to the house. I was on the ground digging holes and I heard what sounded like lips smacking. I'm not joking, Steve. I was thinking to myself, what the heck is that? And I got up, I got up off the ground and looked around and didn't see anything. I thought, oh well, and went back to planting. A few minutes later, I heard lips smacking loudly again. I stand up and I look in the direction it was coming from. There was a big, probably three to four foot tall, standing in the right of a large oak tree. Sorry, there is a being, probably three or four feet tall, standing to the right of a large oak tree. I got my camera out to video it, just so I could zoom in and see if I could tell what it was. I have friends who are hunters, and they say I captured a dog man. I can't tell myself, but I do have the video and a still shot that I can send you to share with your viewers. I know people can see things that we don't always notice right away. I love your opinion and your viewers' opinions. To help possibly identify the creature that I see here on our land here in North Texas. I've been growled at, howled at, whooped at, and have gotten many recordings of something that sounds like a hyena, all recorded out my bedroom window. My son was on a piece of heavy equipment working, at working and clearing trees on the land, and he got screamed at. And he jumped down and told me it's time to go in the house, and we did, all well. Another experience during this same spring gardening. I bought a 200-foot roll of twine to tie up my tomato plants to the trellis that was roughly four feet tall. I woke up one morning and went out to the garden and had been picked up and unrolled all the way out the garden, 50 feet long, and then another 100 feet further than that where it made a sharp left turn and went off into the woods and was weaved around several trees. It was like something found a new toy. My son went in after it and we thought, coyote? Raccoon? It was picked up and over a few of the four foot tomato trellises so we didn't think that it could have been any of those. I recorded that one too and we'll send it as well in case you're interested in seeing it. But not including it because I don't know how big of a video files I can send via email. <clears throat> I'll stick to pictures this time. Also, I was away for a month and my son was taking care of my chickens. He let them out to free range, and about half the flock got picked off by predators. I probably lost 40 birds. Well, the same spring I was out in the garden and I heard a chicken out in the woods, or something pretending to be a chicken, trying to lure me into the woods, right outside my garden fence. My first thought was that one of the chickens survived, and I'd better go get it. But then suddenly my gut feelings kicked in and realized I was getting baited and I took off running into the house. Another time I was looking for my sons, my sons and thought they're up on a large hill. It's probably a mile or so walk to get to where I thought they were. They have the side by side with them. So I had to walk up there. I walked and reached the top of the hill and didn't see them any, anywhere, not realizing they had moved to a different area. So I started walking back home and I saw something move over to my right, and I could see a small shoulder and neck with some black fur sticking out, moving back and forth a few inches at a time through a big pile of trees that were torn down to put in new fences. It was like something had inhabited and made a little house or shelter up under all that brush. All the limbs were still in the trees, and there were hollow areas in those piles of trees, and they were not stacked like clear-cut logs but just piled up like brush. It looked like a monkey in there. I started walking faster and tried not to run. I made it home and the boys got back to the house before I did and I told them what happened, but they didn't believe me, of course. They didn't even want to go up there and look for themselves. Steve, I don't know why I see things that they don't. I also wanted to tell you about another time when my hubby and I lived in East Texas in the late 80s in a town called Wolf 
city. We were always having strange things happening there, and the boys and I were home alone most of the time, as hubby had a two-hour commute to Dallas daily, and I never ever felt good living there. Never felt safe, and was so happy to move away from that area. At that house in the country, I had a barn where I kept my 14 goats. One was a big buck, and then there were some nannies and a few babies, 14 altogether. I always milked the goats in the morning and evening, always locked them in at night because I worried about predators. One morning I went out to milk the goats and I saw that the barn door was opened and the goats weren't in the pasture. I walked inside with my milking pail and all my goats were dead, all massacred. Their heads, arms and legs were ripped off their bodies and all piled up on one massive pile along one side wall of the barn. It took hands to open that barn door, and it took hands to rip the limbs off those goats. They were not eaten. They were only killed. It was very traumatizing, and I'll never forget it. I really loved my goats and had a relationship with my goats like I did with my dogs. Another time I came home from shopping, and all my cats had been rounded up and drowned in the metal cows, in the metal cows water tanks. Holy she it. That is so frickin' nasty. Man. My father's... Hey, Bubs, settle down. <laughs> Sorry. My father was born in Arkansas in 1915. He and his younger brothers were moonshiners during the Great Depression. On several occasions, they experienced a Bigfoot coming into their camp with their still where their still was located down by the I think I've pronounced this wrong in the past Uweta River Uweech Wichita River Wichita River sorry O-U-I-C-H-I-T-A River one time they were making a pot of beef stew and something came into the camp laying trees over as it approached them it was dark outside and they only had their light from the campfire but they could see a large animal on two legs walking into the camp. Their horses were rearing up and their, and their dogs ran off. They jumped on their horses and rode away. Once it was daylight, they came back and all their beef stew had been eaten. They thought it was black but hard to tell in the dark and only having light from the fire. Another time they were staying in a cabin near the same area. They woke up in the morning and opened the door and there stood a large auburn or reddish colored bigfoot in the front yard of that cabin they closed the door and waited inside until it had gone before they left another family member that had an experience was my niece she's camping in east texas with a lot of family members in april of 2014 where they used to go to ride motorcycles and four wheelers one of the nights they were sleeping in the tents no. oh man come here doggy come on She's got the... Sorry. Hold on a second. She's got the speaker cable wrapped around her under the desk. All right. Yeah. Mom's probably taking through walks in, all right? So down. Um, she just wants to play with me non-stop. And I try to outplay her, too, at nighttime for a bed. Doesn't happen. She will not quit. I don't quit. Another family member that had ex an experience was my niece. She was camping in East Texas with a lot of family members in April 20... 14, where they used to go ride motorcycles on four-wheelers. One of the nights they were sleeping in the tents. My niece and her hubby and their two small children were in their tent, and my niece was suddenly woke up by some strange noises in the camp area. There were several tents where other family members sleeping. She got scared and put her little, put her little daughter between her and her hubby. She laid back down with her back against the back of the tent, Suddenly, she felt a very large hand on her lower back. She got up and started shaking her husband to wake him, and he wouldn't wake up. She looked up and saw that the top of the tent was being pressed down towards her face. She could hear a lady screaming, like she was being murdered, along with chatter, back and forth on both sides of the camp that she couldn't understand what they were saying. She called for her mother in another tent, and nobody could hear her for some reason. After a while, it got quiet and started becoming daylight, and she decided to unzip the tent and look out, and out by the fire. 
she saw her husband's cousin sitting in a chair by the fire with his pistol pointed at the woods. She went out and talked to him, and they both had a very bad night with these creatures. When morning came, the cousin loaded up his four-wheeler and said he will never go camping again. My niece wouldn't even tell me the story. She was so traumatized. But I got a second hand from her mother, my sister, when they got back from the trip. To this day, she will not talk about it. My sister called me and said, Oh my God, you will not believe what happened to us on the camping trip. And proceeded to tell me of their experience. That's all I know of that one. I have a set of twin sisters that used to live in East Texas, and one lived in a house, and the other lived on the same property, but in a travel trailer. One sister, one sister was sitting on her front porch, and the other was sitting on her couch in the travel trailer, and the one on the travel trailer looked out the window and saw a large gray Bigfoot walking across a farmer's field, heading toward the river that was at the end of the road. She jumps up and runs out, and the other sister, sitting on the porch, also saw it, and they were running to each other and met in the yard. One of them ran to the house and grabbed car keys and drove to the end of the road where it dead ends into the river, and they lost it and couldn't find it. Another sister lives in that same city, in the country as well, and she was in her spare room when her grandchildren slept on bunk beds when they, sorry, she was in her spare room where her grandchildren sleep on bunk beds when they come to visit. She was sitting at her camp at her computer in that room, and it was after midnight. She heard knocking with knuckles on the window behind her and next to the bunk beds pressed against the window. She jumped up and ran screaming to her husband, who was asleep in their master bedroom, and told her it was nothing go to bed. The next time I drove up there to visit her, I asked her to tell me the story again and show me what window it was. She took me outside and showed me the window, and the bottom ledge of that window hits me at the top of my forehead, and I'm five foot three. So, it had to be something tall enough to see in that very tall window and see her over the bunk beds while she sat at the desk on the other side of the room. Small room, actually. That's all I'm sending in on this email, but if I remember any more, I'll send them. My friend reminds me of things that I for forget about that he remembers happened to me, lol. So I'm enclosing a couple of pictures of Dogman looking creature up by my garden that I recorded that got my attention by smacking its lips, and yes, I'm serious. I can only think now, looking back, that that I looked like a tasty meal. I do have videos, but probably too much trouble to play them on your video, so I'll send the shots, the still shots. I've been meaning to send you these experiences for a long time. I'm glad I can finally get that off my list of important things to do. Thank you for all you do, Steve. Well, all right. Ooh, that looks a little creepy, that one with the circle around it, doesn't it? What the hell? What the hell is that? And there we go again with an example I always like to give after reading people's experiences is just try to picture somebody waking up in the morning thinking they need some kind of twisted attention online and thinking to themselves, gee, I wonder what I'm going to make up and put in an email this morning. Absolute bullshit story. I don't think so. Right? Appreciate you sending all that in. That's a lot of time you just donated to all the people here through me. And we appreciate you big time. East Texas. You know, there's sightings all over the world, right? But there sure is some way, there's some very popular areas, <laughs> especially North America, right? East Texas. How many times? East Texas, East Texas, Florida. Pennsylvania, upstate New York, British Columbia, Alaska, Oregon, Washington, Northern California, right? Ohio, Kentucky, <laughs> right? Louisiana, Alabama, 
but really very predominantly East Texas, Florida. Anyway, the killing thing. I don't get it. I don't understand who or why is responsible for the mass killings of, of uh, farm animals, dogs. Why? Who is that? What is that, right? I mean, there are forest people frequenting the forests around where I live right here all the time. I'm not hearing anything getting killed anywhere and left, mutilated, legs ripped off, dogs torn in half, thrown against the house. I don't hear any of that shit going on around here. And I do know 110% these forest people are here. They're here. There's no denying it. They are here and they have been for a long time. So what is it that's doing the killing? Hmm? What is it? Well, obviously there is more than just these people. There's more than just these people existing or coming here. I can't, I can't tell you if anything's here full time or not. I can't, but what is it? What is it? When is it? And where is it showing up and why? When it comes to whoever or whatever is responsible for going ballistic on our stock animals. Right? Thank God it's, they're doing that to the, you, you know, in a way, I mean, it's very unfortunate. You come home and all your, your goats are mutilated, piled up against the wall. At least it wasn't the family. <laughs> Right? Or does that shit, or does it go down with human beings and we don't get to find out? Damage control comes in and cleans up the mess and keeps it under wraps. Maybe. I don't know. Pretty alarming. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on with your family. You might want to think about sharing this video with any of your family members that don't want to face the facts, the truth of what they have experienced and they just don't, they want to sweep it under carpet. You might want to encourage them to share the video. Oh, hold on a minute. Oops. Sorry, just got interrupted and I lost where I was. Damn it. Sarah just came in and grabbed the dog to go do her walk. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, yeah. There's a lot of stuff being withheld from us, obviously, right? There's a lot of stuff. I would like to know. I'd like to know if uh, this is happening to humans the odd time. What's happened to your goats? I don't know. Anyway, here we go. Uh, I'll share all these pictures for certain. And everybody can have a look at them. All right, here we go. There's another one. This is titled Sabe vs. Coyote. Hey there, Steve. My name is Connie Lynn Moore. You may use my name. My husband, Lewis, and I emailed you about a year ago and sent you some pics of military helicopters with the decal of Sasquatch on them. I remember that. Here in Chehalis in Centralia, Washington, off of I-5. Anyway, we were watching the other day and it was about Sabe hunting coyotes and ripping them apart. About six years ago on the same property, Lewis's mom's two-acre pasture that runs alongside a big levee. There's a creek on the other side of the levee. This is about 1 a.m. We were sitting in the middle of the field looking, looking for shooting stars. And all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. Something huge was running back and forth, smashing huge tree limbs, and you could even hear it breathing, like it had two whiskey barrels for lungs. It was growling, and all of a sudden, we hear a bunch of coyotes yipping and screeching. It sounded like they were trying to get away from this thing. The smashing chase went on for about 10 minutes, and then we hear it catch a coyote and tear it apart. The last sounds of the coyote have given me nightmares. This is the same spot where Louis saw Sabe through his binoculars. He said it looked like it had long matted dreadlocks or a person in a ghillie suit. 
It was a light brown or blondish color. It was swaying back and forth as it walked backwards down the other side of the levee. Thanks, Steve. Steve, thanks for everything. Man, you make us all feel better. You're amazing, and God bless you, Connie Lynn. And God bless you too, Connie. I appreciate you sending that in. Swaying back and forth, walking backwards, right? As soon as it sees those evil, the evil gaze of a human being setting upon it, sends it into absolutely threatened mode. The human stare sends something so incredibly huge and elusive into terror. Intimidated. Intimidated to the max just from our eyeballs. What are we missing? <laughs> right? What are we missing? What are we missing when it comes to us? I've always said from the very beginning, we, we're not going to... I mean, we're learning shit, but I don't think we'll be able to fully comprehend much until we figure out our own shit. Right? Figure out who we really are. And that would answer a lot. Who are we? Who are we for real? Besides worker bees gathering the honey. And that's what we are, most of us. No denying it. We're just a bunch of worker bees collecting the honey for those sons of bitches. Conditioned to not find out what or why. Conditioned to look down, work hard, look forward to... This is one of the biggest... Frickin' mind-boggling farces wool over our eyes is conditioning us, conditioning us to actually accept and think of looking forward to being 65 to retire, whatever age. I don't give a shit what it is. That is such a bad, wrong violation of the gift of life. Just think you work hard until you're 65, then you can you can retire and do whatever you want. Really, with my broken down body and no energy? Can't wait, you lying, dirty sons of bitches. Sorry for that little outburst. Sorry, not sorry. Now, this is what happens when you begin to awaken and think independently and learn true knowledge. This is what happens. Every single thing, all the bullshit stands out clear as a bell. Clear as a bell. All right, here's another one. Collective consciousness or mind speak and questions. Steve, I have submitted several early contact experiences with the forest people, which you read to the group. Since then, I have been trying to make sense of other encounters I've had here in Arizona. Arizona, another popular place, right? I've tried to put together the pieces of the puzzle and would like to share what I have discovered with the people of your channel. Sweet, looking forward to it. I'm also working on a future email to you and the group concerning the forest people and the Bradshaw Mountains here in Arizona. This email will focus not only on the forest people, but portals as well. Just as Gene Roddenberry imagined a future in which Star Trek Spock would mind melt with others, more of us, thanks to you and your show, are now becoming more aware of our ability to intuit our thoughts and emotions with the forest people, as well as to conscious, consciously think and create communications with them without the use of our other five senses. Collective consciousness or our mind speak becomes more apparent in our ability to intuitively sense and experience the interactions between ourselves and the forest people's physical, emotional, mental, and most important, spiritual energy fields. Although science is long being convinced of the existence of gravitational, electric, and magnetic fields, significant research in the frontier science known as parapsychology, or the study of physics, PSI, phenomena, indicates that other types of fields, including thought fields, may also exist. This thought fields and other actions in the case of the forest people, mind speak transparency, change in frequency and or vibration, foul smell and infrasound could be a result of some such energy field. A fundamental PSI phenomenon is extrasensory perception or influence, perhaps made possible by the apparent ability of the forest people to operate beyond the constraints of time and space. Examples include telepathy or mind speak and remote viewing, which has been reported by viewers. 
questions. Number one, energy fields. Could this be a shift in frequency or vibration used for transporting between portals and infrasound used against humans? Number two, does the forest people use different frequencies or different for different purposes? Number three, infrasound can be used to produce infrasound can be used to produce in humans disorientation, nausea, confusion, and maybe even time loss. Could this be the reported source from viewers' encounters with these beings? Number four, if the forest people use collective consciousness, mind speak, mind meld, telepathy, or energy fields effectively, could they also have the ability to the ability of remote viewing and responding when needed by use of portals or interdimensional travel? to the site by simply changing a norm frequency for them? Steve, I know you may have may have not, sorry, Steve, I know you may not have the answers to these questions. I'm simply trying to move your listeners to a higher plane of thinking concerning these beings. You, your channel, and members of the round table have proven without a doubt that indeed these beings exist and have abilities that we may have had in the past. In closing, we must move forward from the tree knocks and the hoots to acceptance that they are here. I'm still adding my puzzle with pieces provided by the many who have had their contact with these beings as I have. Ernie Engel, Arizona. Ernie, huge appreciation, man. I'm so glad that there's so many people moving forward, accepting the facts from the people, and moving on them. All right? And digging. Trying to figure it out and speaking openly about it. Golden, absolute gold, created, provided by the people, right? You know, I was thinking a little, some funny thoughts a little while ago about the existence of these people. And you try to like, you know, like when Sarah and I have conversations or if few other people that I'm, I'm close with had conversations. We talk about, you know, various incidents with other human beings, other people, you know, conflicts or weird, what the hell was that about? And I always, instead of lashing out and calling somebody names or whatever, I always try to picture being that person and trying to figure out how they got to that place between their ears, what caused them to react that way and where they're coming from. I try to understand and picture them being them first to help understand. And uh, I try, I, I do that a lot in life. And, um, you know, I'm trying to picture being these beings. You know, people, we always, we obviously, we, ex we accept the fact that they outclass us in so many ways. But then again, if you try to picture being one of these people, what a shit eating life. Right? The only thing I can, I have of envy in a way. Um, to have their skills would be obviously absolute freedom, maybe. It appears they may be absolutely free, but then again, maybe not, right? The swaying back and forth, the anxiety and the fear from us seeing them, that's not really being free. But, you know, as far as I can tell, they don't have to pack any physical items with them. They don't have any connection to anything physical. That's, that's a big bonus. All our shit just weighs us down, right? All our useless shit. I mean, all this stuff around me is great memories, but in reality, it's just useless shit. Absolutely useless. It's cool to look at. It's a memory. About it. But it weighs us down. So there's something I could possibly envy them with is the fact they don't have useless shit being lugged around or they have to stay anchored to a, a box, a house full of useless shit. Apparently, they don't need fire, and if they do, they, they keep it pretty private. They don't need a firearm or a bow or any kind of weapon to harvest their game meat. They can just go grab it or ping in the head with a rock at a very, at whatever distance, whatever. They can, out, they, they can hunt very, very sufficiently. They can gather up some food. And then I was kind of laughing in a way, saying, the, you know, the drawbacks of being one of these people. Well, you'll never, ever get to go to a spa. Even though maybe you might observe them from the distance. Definitely nobody's ever going to attempt to wax your bikini line. That ain't going to happen. Right? You're not going to be able to go to the groomers. 
right? I don't think you're going to get to shampoo and condition your hair every couple of days. You're not going to be able to go hit a hot tub and relax in that nice, soothing hot water. Uh, crack a cold beer. Hang out. Sit on a popular point and watch the sunset without having to worry about somebody seeing your ass. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things going on there that must make life somewhat miserable. Having to hide all the time. Potentially sharing, sharing your existence on the face of this flat plane or round ball. I don't give a shit which one it is, to be honest. Another topic. With billions of these... On your average, smart as a pickle human beings. Smart as a pickle human beings, but you still have to avoid them, even though they're as smart as pickles. That would be unsettling for me. Be like, oh my God, look at these absolute dumbasses. Why do I got to show them this kind of respect? I don't give a flinch. Shh. Look at them. Bunch of frickin' window lickers. Why do I got to hide from them? Why can't I allow them to look at me in the face? It freaks me out so bad to have one of these dumbass, window licking human beings observing me. I can't have that at all costs. You know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a shitty sentence to have as far as being some kind of a being a person, being given a life, and that's that's how you have to go through that lifetime. It'd really suck ass, wouldn't it? That also would add up to why maybe why so many of these beings look at us with absolute hate. Right? Is it jealousy? Is it jealousy? What is it? Is it envy? Jealousy? Anger and hate. Disgust. That thing looked at me like it wanted to kill me. Right? How many times have you heard that? Hundreds, thousands, right? But when you think about it, you guys, try to picture being one of these beings and governing yourself with the rules that we can see them governing themselves. Being governed by. That's a shitty life, man. I don't envy these forest people. I don't envy them. I wouldn't want to come back in this lifetime as one of the forest people. Let's put it that way. No thanks. I want to go, I want to walk around freely 24 hours a day in, this, in the sunshine on a beach. I don't want to have to hide and smell like ass. <laughs> right? Yeah. We don't talk about that often at all, do we? We don't really talk too much about being one of these people and going and living our lives by their rules. But then again, think about what they see while they observe us. How insane we are, right? Thinking we gotta go green and save the world, but at the same time, we're pumping out brand new vehicles every year, brand new phones, brand new computers because we could just make them a little more cooler better looking but meanwhile the minerals and the time and the energy and the resources getting gobbled up to keep up with the smiths and jones is exactly what the society thinks we're fighting <laughs> right and trying to go green can't babble oops hope i'm making sense let's make it let's get somebody else hurt all right let's get somebody else hurt Anyway, appreciate you sending those questions in, man. And I hope, I hope and pray that everybody else has got the wheels turning. They have accepted a lot of the facts we've had presented to us non-stop with patterns and you're moving ahead. Don't get lured into staring at dermal ridges and mid-tarsal breaks and footprints and gigantopithecus. And we're going to destroy the careers of all those kind, honest people out there that want to present the truth babbling lifetime of learning with the sasquatch people all right how long is this one not too long here we go hello steve and the Hat hunt family in my first email i'd given a run-up i had given a run-up to my first face-to-face -face. however that one didn't get read and the second one did which was in folk arkansas after the face-to-face -face encounter okay there's Time out. There's a, a sweet, great, awesome example of getting it all out in one email, you guys, all right? If you, and I get it, it's a lot of time to send an email. But if you send one, 
plan to send another one later on, which which relates to it. It could be months, and then it just doesn't make sense, right? Or they get missed altogether. It kind of sucks. So there you go. There's the example of why you all need to get it all out one email, if you can. That email was titled "My Lifetime of Encounters and Experiences with the Sasquatch People." I didn't number that one as I did the second one. This one will be the third email. Now going back a little with the face-to-face -face encounter, it happened in an area of Kentucky called Kettle Creek on 500 acres of free land called God's Land. The locals call it Hippie Land. As I stated, I walked up on this thing bent over in the berry bushes after crossing a very small creek. I had a friend's dog with me and she spotted it before I did. The dog went crazy, like I'd never seen her do before. She was lunging at the thing, snarling, barking, growling, and snapping the air toward this thing. I was glancing back and forth between the dog and what I thought was a black bear. I think the dog was trying to keep the focus of the bear on her so I could escape. I'm freaking out inside my head as I'm deathly afraid of bears, as I explained in the first email. Anyway, as my eyes went back to the bear, it stood up. It's now facing me. It had its head barely turned as I watched, as it watched both me and the dog at the same time. No expression on its face that I could tell, except something that seemed serious. I locked eyes with it for several seconds and couldn't understand what I was looking at. I had a full view of its face, taking in as much detail as I could, even though I was scared witless. His face was not of a bear, no snout or protruding nose. It had hair outline. It had hair outlining the structure of its face, black, with reddish tint around the forehead and its cheeks. The eyes seemed to hold expression, but I couldn't read it. I was perplexed at what I was seeing. There was no beard or mustache on his face, but hair across the upper part of the cheeks. The face seemed rounded. The eyes were big and the eyes glistened. Dark brown eyes with a hint of white along the outer side of the eyeballs. The lashes were dark. Not sure if black or dark brown. The nose is sort of like a human nose, but much bigger and slightly spread out. His mouth was big, almost too big. The lips were thin. I never saw any teeth. Thank the stars for that. For some reason, my eyes were glued on its mouth. I don't understand why. Then I heard the words. It said, quote, control the dog, the dog, or it will be no more, end quote. At that point, I looked at the dog and tried to coax her to me. I looked back at this thing and couldn't figure out how it spoke to me without its mouth moving. My eyes were fixed on the mouth again, and I again heard the same words again, but this time more demanding. I grabbed the dog by the scruff and tried to pull her alongside of me, but she broke my grasp. As I looked up at this thing, I was staring at. The eyes were focused down on the dog more. I knew if I didn't grab the dog again, it would die. So I grabbed a firmer grip and I pulled her to me. Strange ease surrounded me and the dog as I began pushing it to my left and off the boulder at my back. As I pushed the dog further, my eyes were on the dog and not this thing. Got past the boulder and I realized my grip on the dog, sorry, and released my grip on the dog and she took off without me towards the front meadow. I turned briefly back toward this thing to see it slightly turning and bending back down in the blackberry bushes. Then is when I saw it had swaying breasts. It was a female. Why didn't I look at the full body? I decided to leave this thing be since it didn't hurt me or eat me, like the stories I'd heard from the people around this land. That night, just before the sun went down, I was it was dusk, and again I heard a voice in my head. This time it felt deeper than the first. It said, Now that you have seen us, we will have to come get you. That voice scared me so bad, I packed up all my things and left early the next morning. I didn't say anything anything to anyone on the land. I couldn't tell them something I had no clue about, only that I encountered these things, and it spoke to me in my head. How'd they react to that? 
The feeling I got from the second voice, it was her brother, and not sure what he meant by coming to get you. I think in a way this was the opening for my learning from them and about them. I had no knowledge about, quote, Bigfoot, end quote, until the early 1990s. That's when I first saw snippets of the Patterson-Gimlin film. I didn't even know other people had experiences. I didn't know that there were more than, than those I had experienced all over the U.S. until I saw that film. As I stated in my first email, I hitchhiked all over the U.S. and stayed alone in my travels. I didn't like traveling with other people. I liked being able to take my time or travel swiftly to my next destination. It's, un it's unheard of these days of a young teenage girl hitchhiking the U.S., but that was my life and I loved it. Being able to live in the peaceful wilds of that time. I apologize for this being long and I will be writing in with more of what I began learning. One thing for sure though, the Sasquatch people are very much family oriented, much like we humans. They have emotions, but seem to be able to control them better than we can. Remember, they took a different path than humans did. So, they were able to hone their natural abilities that we humans think are impossible. Peace and blessings to peace and blessings to you all and the life on this beautiful planet. Aho, Julie. Turtle Hagen. You can use my name. Julie, that's one hell of a story and experience. Holy shit. What's with the dogs? What's with the dogs, you guys? I've asked that a lot of times in the past. What's with the dogs? What's threatening? What's threatening to them from a simple canine? Is it just because the dogs can expose their presence? Is that it? Is that enough for them to be real angry at the dogs? Even a dog that's present beside a human being, look at one of the, looking at one of these beings and barking. All right, the gig's up. The dog just exposed your presence, possibly. So why would you be so threatened now? The gig's up. So obviously, maybe it's the fact that the dog has already given up the presence of these people. Maybe that's not the point of them being pissed at the dog. Maybe it's something more, right? Something's up between a lot of these forest people and canines. Not all, but some. That's quite the detailed experience, right? You, you definitely painted the picture of what you saw clearly to us. And that is one hell of a story to wake up in the morning and think to yourself, gee, I wonder, I wonder what bullshit story I'd come up with this morning and email it to a stranger through YouTube. Said nobody frickin' ever, except maybe one and I don't know how many thousands, right? Anyway, time for me to carry on with this day. It's funny, you know, most days I bite my lip when I'm on here. I bite my lip about so many top topics I can scream out loud about that I follow. When I, when I can listen to something as I work, getting other things done. So many examples of absolute insanity going on with our existence. It's tough for me to, to sit here knowing there's so many people listening, coming here talking freely. This is tough for me sometimes to keep my mouth shut, you know? It's one, one thing I will say, this is off topic. So if, if you don't want to hear about something that's off topic of the Sasquatch Forceville topic, you can leave now if you want, just for the heads up. But, you know, remember a handful of years ago, that criminal died of a fentanyl overdose with that police officer coincidentally had his knee on the on the man and he's speaking out loud i couldn't breathe whatever happened the media manipulated that episode into something absolutely unbelievable and i mean let's face it if you can't breathe you ain't doing no speaking but anyways um I'm just saying, I'm using that as an example of how the community reacted to the media manipulating the people. And what? Town cities were lit on fire, rioting, people killed, people going absolutely ballistic by the thousands. Right? Now, seeing how passionate people are about one man dying, let's have a look at what, what just went down on the other side of the planet recently. Israel has killed over 10,000 civilians this past couple weeks. 3,000 of them are innocent children. 
reportedly 10,000 of these people are innocent human beings. I don't see any neighborhoods getting burnt down. I don't see anybody doing shit. I don't see anybody giving a flying shit. Isn't that bizarre? What I'm just saying is, isn't that just bizarre? It's a great example of what the media can do to you and me. The media can dictate what you're going to get upset about and how upset you're going to get. And the media can also dictate and control how you're going to react to other important things going on on the planet. Isn't that crazy? Isn't it crazy this lifetime? Isn't it crazy what people people get away with doing to other people right now currently? It's just so wrong, you know? Another was well, a week ago. They didn't even deny it. Israel sent a missile into a refugee camp full of women and children and elderly and people that don't want anything to do with the conflict. They blatantly sent a missile in there and killed dozens of people. Because they felt there was a Hamas leader in there. <laughs> Holy shit, man. The insanity that's going on today is over the top. Isn't it? You can fact check all that shit. Look it up. Look into it yourself. It's amazing. It's amazing what the power of the media... The, the power the media has over all of us. Not all of us. Not me. Not me. I have zero respect for the mainstream media. Absolutely nothing. Furthermore, when it comes to leadership of any country in the world today, the number one, what I feel is the number one indicator that you as a leader, a group of leaders, are an epic fail is when you promote or facilitate war in any way in any way at all if you do donate money to a conflict you're an epic failure as a leader if you do not promote peace talks as a leader of any country you're an epic failure you're an absolute waste of a lifetime you shouldn't be where you are i strongly believe there isn't any excuse for anyone to promote, facilitate, feed, money, fund, war in any way. Not today. We're because we're we're modern civilized human beings, right? Anyway, there's just a pile of shit going on that we're absolutely misled about. The guilty are more and more being proven to be the innocent when it comes to conflict, believe it or not. Mainstream news. I'm at the point now, if I ever hear anything out of mainstream news, I go the absolute opposite direction every single time. And every single time it holds true to be the right maneuver. There you go, there's my little rant to root at the end. Now, back on to regular life, living. Share my story at howtohunt.com is where you get your words heard word for word, no matter what. And uh, I got one more trip to go, and I'm gonna put way more energy into this. I'm going to put way more energy into all the people that I want to speak with when it comes to these topics and more and have them here with me. Right now, this time of year, I'm lucky just to be cutting out this amount of time and sitting here doing this. All right? Quick note to all you impatient people. And furthermore, another quick note to the impatient people. If you see me or somebody else not quite doing something the way you think they should do it, the stage is wide open for you to do it better. All right, so to the handful of people out there that like to lash out and tell people they're doing it the wrong way, you're not doing this, I hate the way you do that, you have full free opportunity to do it better and lead by example. All right, do it better. Don't lash out and snivel like a two-year-old little snotty kid. Do it better. There you go. There's my rant and rabble babble for the end of the day, end of the video of this and uh, what else. Sarah still has... Her sale going on in her store, shipping included. And her prices, whatever she got going on, I think these are an extra free right now. And uh, that'll be in the, I'll have that uh, link in the description below. If you want to go hit up her store and see what she's selling and what's on sale for, I think, for this whole month. There you go. I'm out of here. And I'll be back again. <laughs> I'll be back again. And I'm going to ramp up speed. This month, this last month, last two months and this month is typically 
no time. So we just appreciate what we can do here while we're at the time, with the time given, the time available. And uh, but I'm gonna, I can't wait. I'm excited to wrap this up. I'm wrapping it up. Back later.